So this is the freshwater generator. This is the still water. We have another machine of the engine room, which produces usable fresh water for the vessel. But what do I mean when I say usable water? Well, we can divide usable fresh water in two categories, distilled and drinking water. The difference between them is hardness, which is the minerals contained in the water, mainly calcium and magnesium. Distilled water has little hardness and is produced by evaporating seawater in the freshwater generator, whereas drinking water has enough hardness which we humans are used to for drinking and consuming. I'll explain how this is produced later. For now, let's see how fresh water is used on board. Distilled water in the engine room is used for general services such as cleaning, the feed water for the boiler, and our cooling water system after chemical treatment of course. And in our cabins, distilled water is used in our toilets and showers as you could see in my previous videos. And to be honest, it tastes a little strange. <laughs> now. Drinking water is generally used in the galley sinks, where food is prepared, and in other galley services, such as this water heater. Finally, the water we use for regular drinking comes from bottled water or we can drink straight from the tap. Now back in the engine room, let's get the basic overview for the freshwater generator. We have two heat exchangers, called an evaporator and condenser, which you can see here. There is then the evaporator shell, where the seawater will be under vacuum, which I'll explain soon. There is also the main engine jacket water and seawater piping. The jacket water will be used to heat the seawater. Does it look a little confusing? Don't worry. We'll go step by step. We start here at the fresh water generator ejector pump, where we will send seawater from outside the ship to the machine to begin filling the system. Seawater first enters the condenser and flows in a cross formation, splitting here part going to the ejector to create a vacuum and a smaller part to the shell. Here is the evaporator shell. Inside the seawater will later be evaporated, but for now a vacuum is being produced by an ejector at the bottom. This is the ejector. A simple device that will create a vacuum in the shell. It works by expanding the main flow of seawater at high speeds in the nozzle to an outlet and in turn creating a suction inside of the shell. Now why is this important? Like I said, the heating of the seawater will generally be from the main engine jacket water which usually is about 80 degrees Celsius. But that's not enough to evaporate water. If we look at a temperature entropy diagram of water, you can see that at atmospheric pressure, water evaporates at 100 degrees Celsius. However, should the pressure drop from atmospheric, such as in a vacuum, the saturation temperature also drops, which will eventually be below 100 and even below 80, allowing main engine jacket water to evaporate seawater. So back at the shell, we verify the vacuum and then allow the main engine jacket water to enter the system through the evaporator, which will flow in cross direction transferring heat to the seawater 
and evaporating it inside the shell, which will then pass through a demister, which lowers carryover salt. Let's now have a look at both heat exchangers, the condenser and the evaporator. The evaporator, which has jacket water or steam, is transferring heat to the seawater, and the steam produced inside the shell will be condensed by cooling seawater from the pump. This condensation is distillate water, and as you could see, the cooling seawater from the ejector pump was heated. This is the seawater that goes into the evaporator. You can see that this increases the efficiency of the fresh water generator. Focusing on the product, the distillate water, this goes to a distillate water pump, which will send it to a solenometer sensor to check if the salt content is less than 10 parts per million. If it is higher, the water is rejected through a solenoid valve back to the shell. But if the content is less than 10 parts per million of salt, it is then sent to our distillate water tank. But how do we make distillate water into drinking water? Well, this little engineer will help us. Stewart is a rehardening filter filled with rocks that grant the minerals to make drinking water that will later pass through ultraviolet lamps to kill bacteria to make it safe for human consumption. And that's it. That's the basic operational principle at least. But in reality, you have to adjust these three parameters that directly affect the distillate water production. The heating jacket water that goes inside the evaporator, the amount of seawater that you allow pass from the condenser to the evaporator, and finally, the vacuum. You should know that more vacuum makes water boil faster inside the shell. Anyway, what you should always know is that you have to find the perfect balance between these three parameters. For example, let's look at the evaporator. If you allow too little seawater to go inside the evaporator, it's obviously going to evaporate very fast. However, chances are it's going to evaporate before the shell, inside the evaporator. And what does seawater leave behind when it evaporates? Salt. And this causes one of the most common problems, deposits. Salt deposits in the plates will slow down the heat transfer from the jacket water to the seawater and therefore limit the production. A common maintenance is to remove the plates and through chemical washing with a chemical such as Descalex, remove these deposits. Also, you should keep an eye on the solenometer sensor. Sometimes, salt can get stuck on this sensor. So it is recommended that you periodically remove it and clean it, therefore avoiding false salt concentration alarms. Anyway, in the future, as I grow, I'll probably show more maintenance of the freshwater generator. However, for now, I hope at least the basics were clear. And before I end it, I'll give a little bit of extra information. It's recommended that when taking water for the freshwater generator, it be at least 20 nautical miles from nearest land. This is because water from shore or ports are generally more contaminated, and therefore, when we evaporate them, we probably won't kill all the bacteria. And do you really want to be showering with all these guys? <laughs> I didn't think so. So, it's time to end, but not before wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy 2019. Success and nothing else, Seafarer.